Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the In Between Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cheney, and I have a special guest with me today. You've met her once, and now you're going to meet her again. I have Brittany Crabb. For those who don't know, she's been on the pod before. She is a (laughs) humongo YouTube paranormal investigator. She's got a huge following, great platform. She just launched her own private content where you can subscribe. She's going to go into all the goodies, but she's amazing and Last episode, we got to get to know a little bit more about her behind the scenes, how she got to where she is today. But today, we're going to talk about manifestation. We're going to talk about law of assumption, which I'm very excited to learn more about, law of attraction. Just basically, how do we do this thing called life and get the things that we want, like our deepest desires? So, yes, Brittany, welcome back to the in between. Thank you so much, Liz, for having me back. <laughs> oh. And also, can I just point out, it is Star Wars Day as we are filming this, so that's why we are both Darth Vader. <laughs> yes, I have a makeshift little like shrine in the back. I have a Star Wars poster and a <laughs> Yoda <laughs> coffee mug. So welcome. Welcome to <laughs> the Star Wars show. And I got my red light behind me. <laughs> you look way more cool than I do. I was like, oh, God, to be such a fan, I really don't have anything. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let me throw it together my real quick. One- but you know super cute the dark side's the right side Ooh, it yes i will never be a jedi a sith for life i don't think i have the attention span to do the force like how they do it you know like my adhd i don't think i could handle it i would get very distracted so i'm probably more of a jar jar binks if i'm gonna be completely (laughs) honest but (laughs) i can actually see that but i mean that in the best way possible (laughs) i took that as a compliment (laughs) I like Jar Jar Binks. I do too. I'm definitely a bad guy. I'm definitely a Sith. (laughs) Are you truly a bad guy? Maybe not so much a bad guy, but more like a Han Solo. Like, you're not the best person, but you're not evil. You know what I mean? But like... I would definitely... If I had the opportunity, though, I'd be a Sith. (laughs) Hands down. I'm not a Jedi. No way. Kylo (laughs) Ren to the stage, please. Thank you. (laughs) I I am Kylo Ren, literally. I would be. And you know what? He's a torn character. He's not truly evil. So I will, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll go with that. We'll go with that. And who yes. is ever truly evil? Like they've always got baggage, right? So exactly. we all just need therapy. There we go. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness gracious. We went from Star Wars to therapy. But anywho, welcome back <laughs> to the pod. So um, let's do a few little updates since you've last, I mean, you were just on like a couple, like what, a month or so ago. And I feel yeah. like you have just been crushing it, but per usual. So give the listeners a little update on what's going on in your world. Yeah, so recently I started up a channel membership, which I've never done ever, like on any platform. I don't have a Patreon or any of that. So I was like, I think it's time to finally make like exclusive videos and exclusive <laughs> live streams. And it, it's just been fun. I'm on top of it too. <laughs> Hell yeah. So like I'm constantly posting. It's been a week now since I started. So yeah, it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun. My members are really dedicated too. So it's like, they it's are. Crazy. They, they are, are, but I love it. I see all the like the comments and stuff. Like I was telling you before we started, I was like, gosh, it's really cool seeing just, you know, I know you make your content for yourself and for your fans, but seeing them get involved and be passionate about you and also like the same things you're passionate about, like that's just gotta be such a rewarding feeling. Cause I know this is hard work, like putting all this kind of stuff together. So it is. Tell and, me to, about it. and to be consistent. So snaps yeah. for Brittany for being on top of her shit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know having a membership now, it's lit a fire under me. So it's like, I have to deliver like absolutely no slacking. And I had to make sure that I could deliver everything that I was putting as my perks. I wanted to make sure. So it took me a while to like come up with everything. Can I handle it? But I can, it's been really fun. Good. And it's with your biggest supporters in there. So it's, it's really fun. And it's like an exclusive little club that nobody knows about. Well, they do know about it, but it's whether or not you want to join it. Right. (laughs) It's like, I don't know, like your friendship club in a sense. Exactly. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. It's really fun. Yeah. So congrats. Congrats. Because I know that's not an easy feat. So no. (sighs) Anyways. But it's really fun. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Well, let me ask you this real quick. Maybe we can segue into our conversation about this. When you started working on this, did you ever think that you would create a community like that was this something you always envisioned or was this something that you manifested or is this just something that you're like "Ooh, this is something new let me look into it kind of thing well i just ever since i was a kid i just knew i wanted to do something like this whether it was tv well tv is like my number one but i just knew one way or another it was going to happen like i didn't know how and i didn't know when i just knew 
I just had a feeling. Yeah. And I totally believe when you have those feelings, like we were talking about before we were recording, it was the validation bumps. When you yes. get goosebumps, Liz calls them validation bumps. Which I, I'm <laughs> calling them now, but it's the truth. I totally believe it's your higher self telling you like, this is what you have. You just have to align to it. Like we got this you know, and I, I've always just wanted to be in the paranormal, an investigator, even like a host of a TV show. And with YouTube, I got to kind of be my own host in a yeah. way, like the way I talk to the camera. And that's just something I've always wanted to do. So I don't know. I, I just kind of always known since I was a kid, I never doubted myself, which is really crazy because a lot of people did doubt me. They thought I was nuts. Like you want to chase ghosts or you want to talk about ghosts. But I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. I had nothing else. I'm passionate about nothing like what I don't know what else to do <laughs> if there was no such thing as ghosts I honestly don't know what I'd be doing right now like I have no other passion I really don't maybe I would try to be an actor or something because I, I would do something in television or movies the entertainment industry is something that I've always wanted yeah. to do I could so, see yeah. you doing that for sure and yeah. I mean if not ghosts it'd be something different but this feeling mm -hmm. of it's not that you knew exactly what you were going to do. You just, you're going to be somebody, something. And it was going to do something with the things that you were passionate about. Very similar to how I started the in-between in the sense of like, I want to create my dream job and I'm not quite sure how to do that. I wanted to be a TV host myself. Like I wanted to be like an Oprah, Rimf uh, Oprah Winfrey, I can't speak. Oprah Winfrey, you. <laughs> you know, and, and my ideas kind of came from like, well, how do I make that a reality? And then just walking that path. So yeah you are very successful and you haven't even reached the top because you're still definitely climbing the ladder, Thank climbing you. the mountain of life. So let's talk about law of assumption, law of attraction, yes, manifesting. We were talking about it last time when we were recording and you were talking about how passionate you were about it and the spirituality elements to it and just kind of the driving force behind what you do. And as somebody who is very spiritual, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm religious, but definitely spiritual, always looking towards the higher power, universe, energy, connection, interconnectivity, all of those things. I was very intrigued because I know people who share similar beliefs like I do, but people who live and walk that path who've also been successful with it. Yeah. So I was like, let's go. You are like my industry expert to bring on the pod and talk about yeah. this. So when did you first learn about law of assumption, law of attraction, or I guess maybe we should kind of rephrase that. Let's first say, what is the law of attraction, law of assumption? Well, law of assumption is really whatever you assume to be true is going to eventually reflect out into your 3D world. The 3D is your physical world, the world that we live in. Your 4D is your imagination. So okay. if you assume you're gonna have a TV show or you're gonna be a TV host like Oprah, you have to keep telling yourself, like it's repetition and imagine yourself being like Oprah. Imagine yourself in front of an audience and feel the feelings of that, of it being true and constantly go back to that image in your head constantly whenever it comes up in your mind that's when you think about it and then just kind of drop it move on like do stuff for yourself but every time it comes into your head you have to just constantly be like oh, I already have that like I have my own show I'm Oprah Winfrey <laughs> like, I'm Oprah Winfrey you you're to... Oprah Winfrey oh yeah it's all comes down to your beliefs and a lot of people have issues with that because a lot of it comes from your self-worth your self-concept and really you are the universe if you think about it Ooh, love that i know love that it, it's it's true like you are the divine really like it all has to happen inside of you you have to experience it inside for it to project out into your 3d and when the inside becomes dominant like you really become your dominant thoughts that you are over winfrey <laughs> it makes me laugh every time i say that it's okay Eventually, yeah, me too you're going to be led on this bridge of incidents that are taking place that are going to bring you to your desire. And I know at first it sounds so woo woo and <laughs> insane, but trust me, when I first heard about it, I was like, please, you're just telling me I got to change my thoughts and then things are going to happen around me. Like, please. But look at my energy I was in just by saying that I'm basically telling myself, well, I'm not worthy of that. I can't do it. So no wonder it's not happening. Right. You have to really dig deep inside of yourself and see what your thoughts and beliefs about yourself truly are. So when you Ooh. think about yourself, like, what do you think? Do you think you're worthy of certain things? Like, are you worthy of love? Are you worthy of money? Are you worthy of having that job? And if you feel unworthy, why is that? And it's really interesting because if you ask yourself these questions, your subconscious mind will give you the answers. It will, like you will get the answers in your head or you'll even have dreams about it. 
Right. Because your subconscious is always listening. It never shuts up. It's never not listening. It's like recording everything. You have to convince your subconscious mind about your new beliefs. Your conscious mind at the front, you know, the one that brings you down and gives you doubts and everything. That's intrusive the one thoughts. That yeah. The intrusive thoughts. You have to get past that. And your subconscious mind does not know the difference between what is real in the physical world or what is in imagination. So if you're constantly persisting in this imaginal act, these affirmations and just seeing it in your head, your subconscious mind is going to be like, oh, wow, like Liz really is Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> like that's going to happen. What do you have to lose to think for a few weeks or so that you are who you want to be? Like when you get these desires to me and to a lot of people also, that's your higher self telling you like, this is who you are. This is what you're meant to have. This is who you're meant to be. And that's really resonated with me because I've always known I wanted to be like a TV personality and the paranormal and a YouTuber. Well, I didn't know a YouTuber because it didn't exist when I was a kid, but I knew right. I wanted to do something. I just always persisted in it without even realizing it because I imagine all the time. Yeah. Even when I was a kid, I would imagine every day that I was on a ghost show and I was doing this and everything that I imagined as a kid has come true. So like, hmm. there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's really all you, like it all comes from you. And I know it can be kind of hard to take that in and accept that. But right. it's, it's the truth. I'm telling you, like, I am such a prime example of manifestation there's so many things that have happened that I can't believe have happened. Okay. But it's happened because I go back and I'm like, oh my God, like I was imagining that. I was persisting in that, knowing that it's eventually going to happen. And it did. Like, it All right. Do you want to share some examples? I am so intrigued, by the way. If I look like I am zoning out, I just want you to know I am zoning so hard in. Oh, no, I'm no, like, no. should I start taking notes? Like I am so hook, line, and sinker, just FYI. <laughs> like anytime, if you need to like DM me or anything, like girl, email me, text me, whatever you want. Like, I love talking about this. I'm going to tell you about my recent, like this happened a few hours ago, a manifestation. Ooh. Okay. It's about Star Wars. Ooh, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. <laughs> Here, okay. One thing that I specialize in, I swear to God, I am a master manifester when it comes to celebrities. Okay. I can manifest celebrities like that. I mean, it's all on my Instagram. It's crazy. <sighs> and I find how I do it is whenever I wear a shirt of someone on it or something on it, it will eventually happen. So <sighs> I used to live in my like Slytherin shirt. It has Malfoy on it. And I've met him and I've seen him twice. And I went to like the Fantastic Beast premiere and Malfoy was there. Ugh. Then last summer, I got a Jamie Campbell Bauer shirt and I like wore it all the time. He's the one from Stranger Things. Oh, like yeah. Vecna. He's the bad guy. Yeah. And on my birthday, I remember I was wearing that shirt and I wished I'm going to meet Jamie Campbell Bauer this summer. And I met him two months later. Oh, okay. And now it's funny because I made a manifestation video on my channel. I uploaded it January 1st of 2023. In that video, I said, I'm going to meet Hayden Christensen this year. I don't know how, I don't know when, girl, I'm meeting him in August. How? What? Shut yep. up. Yep. That's so cool. But, yep. It's crazy. Like when I say I'm going to meet someone, I'm going to meet them. And also I live in my Darth Vader onesie. So it kind of goes in my theory when I'm wearing something, it always comes true. But I don't know. Is that an assumption that I have? I don't know. But no, so I'm meeting him in August. He's coming to Fan Expo, just like how Jamie came to Fan Expo. And it's weird because like they never go. So that was my most recent one. That's Manifested. amazing. Isn't that weird? And I That's said so like, weird. I'm going to be getting Christensen this year. And I had no idea that like, now I am. I'm like thinking, I'm like, what shirts are in my closet that I can put on? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it works. It works. And I want to wear like, I don't know. Like, I want to meet Adam Driver too. So I have a Kylo Ren shirt. <laughs> I'll have to live in that. That's so cool. This is like before I knew about Law of Assumption. This was in 2019. I remember this is when It Chapter 2 was coming out. And I remember I was watching TV and they were advertising this Los Angeles event for It Chapter 2, this like fun house. And I remember thinking like, that'd be so cool. Like, I'm going to go there. I don't know how, but I'm going to go. Anyways, like not even a week later, maybe two weeks later, less than that. Warner Brothers contacted me and they invited me to go to this event and they wanted me to go to the premiere of it chapter two and I met the cast and it was like all this Pennywise stuff oh my god it's okay like, yeah that's cool it's like when you decide something and you just have no resistance to it 
that's when it happens. It, yeah. happens, it can happen instantly. So it's, it's crazy. I love what you said about us being the universe and being connected and what you just yeah. mentioned there about the resistance, like the resistance is the intrusive thoughts. It's combating that. And I don't know if you struggle with intrusive thoughts. I feel like everyone's had intrusive thoughts here or there. Some of us of struggle course. with it more than you know, usual, but yeah. they are intrusive thoughts. The thing about them is they are so convincing. So if you I are trying to manifest and visualize and embrace, assume the life that you want, like for me, it would be to be a huge podcaster, to be able to travel the world and speak and empower people. You know, maybe it's to get a new job. Maybe it's to find a partner. It's to get married. It's to start a family, buy a house, live in the countryside, whatever it is. How do you combat that voice inside your head? Because the only way you're gonna make it happen is you have to accept the dream. You have to accept the wish, the subconscious, the goal, the imagination, right? Yes, yes so. exactly. You were talking like, you know, with the intrusive thoughts and everything, with law of assumption, even like law of attraction, you are changing the story about yourself, mm. about you and about your circumstances happening around you. So, it's actually kind of good to get like a pen and paper or your notes in your phone, whatever's easier and write down all the thoughts you have about yourself, what you feel about yourself, what you feel about yourself with your dreams. If there's any negative thoughts that come Ooh, up, write like them that. down and write the opposite, which is positive. So like write down the old story of whatever is like negative about yourself, whatever comes to your head, write it down and then change those, write down the positive on the other side and then look on the bad side as the old story and the new side with all the positive stuff as your new story. Those are your new affirmations that you should be telling yourself and persisting in. So say you want to be a public figure, you want to talk to the world. Say you're thinking about that, but then you're like, oh, but like, it's going to take forever. Like, how am I going to do this? You're like, no, no, that is my old story. My new story is I am already doing it. I'm living the dream. I'm traveling the world. It feels amazing. Like people know my name. It's insane. And conjure up those feelings that it's happening right now and see that image in your head. You can make a scene in your head for like five seconds, whether it's you standing in front of a crowd and everyone's cheering for you and you hear it and you feel it. I got chills just like, talking about it Ugh. if you can come back into that and just like every time if you're having a negative thought you switch it instantly think of that image think of the positive affirmations that you have and just keep telling yourself this is my story this is who I am now those intrusive thoughts are the old story so your subconscious and like your conscious mind is trying to fight that off because your mind is trying to keep you safe too right that's one thing. So almost look at it as like in a cute little way, like, okay, they're trying to keep me safe, but this is what I want. <laughs> right. Like you got to keep telling yourself, yeah, that's cute. You want me to be safe, but I want to be a public podcaster. Like I want everything to just happen for me, but constantly persist in that. And eventually it will become so natural to you. The more you persist in it and it will become your dominant way of thinking. You will start to see evidence out in your physical world of hmm. things being moved around for you. I'm telling you, it's you'll start seeing signs, synchronicities, everything. And it's all leading you to your desired reality or desired outcome. You just have to have faith because what do you have to lose? Like, are you going to keep being in that dominant story of, oh, like it's so hard. Like you're going to keep continuing that cycle. You might as well switch to a positive right. story. I know it can be hard sometimes because I've been there too. I'm like, oh, but I've been doing this for years. Like I've <laughs> said that. And then I'm like, no, what's the other outcome? I'm going to keep complaining for the rest of my life or I'm going to actually make it happen. So you have to really be tough with yourself. Because sometimes I can sink into that too. Like I'll get depressed. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, but it didn't happen. And I'm yep. like, wait, wait. No, it did happen. Then I go in my imagination and I'm like, I got a TV show. I'm the number one paranormal investigator. And too. she is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm taking over. Honestly, like, I love it. And then you start seeing, you start getting opportunities. Things just start happening. It's really wild because I thought it was all crazy. And it's not witchcraft either. People think like, oh, you're manipulating. You're not manipulating. Well, no. you're kind of manipulating energy, but like. That's that, kind of what it is. That's already here, though. Exactly. It goes back We're to all energy. Everything's exactly. Energy. I literally was <laughs> just about to say that. Took the words out of my mouth. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I love that. Okay. And I love, 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 and I'm probably going to do this. So everyone listening, 
if I'm going to do it, maybe you should do it too. Gosh, she's bossy. Don't know why I said that, but <laughs> I love what you talked about where you said, take the thought, take the dream, take the passion, take the wish, the imagination. I'm using all those words for anyone to relate to anything, right? What negative thoughts come with that thought, that dream, that imagination, mm -hmm. write those down and write the opposite, which is the positive. Yeah. As you were saying that, I started thinking about, okay, what thoughts come up when I think about the things that I'm trying to accomplish or goals, milestones I'm trying to meet right now. And it's like the negative thought comes in. And I think of the flip side and I'm like, oh my gosh, just in a few seconds, as I was thinking about that, it really does completely change the feeling towards it. So you're so right. But everyone listening, it's easier said than done. Like you're not going to sprint a 5k after not running a single day in your life. I think combating yeah. intrusive thoughts for me, it's a constant thing. I have to struggle with it all the time. I know. Um, I know. I feel you. It, it happens and that's just normal. We're humans, but exactly. you just got to keep redirecting your exactly. mind into the positive story. And eventually like it's going to get easier and easier. You really just got to constantly saturate your mind. You don't have to say affirmations 24 seven. Cause I used to do that. And then I would be living in lack because I'm basically telling my subconscious it's not here. Like I'd be like, I'm this, I'm this, I have it, I have it, I have it. But really I'm telling myself I don't have it because I'm saying it in such a anxiety form. I'm not accepting that it's already here and I have mm. it. And that's been my, yeah. It, okay. It really, like, you have to I like really that. Go, right? Yeah. Because I, I struggle with affirmations. Like some, yes. it depends on the affirmation, like the visualizing where you're at, kind of taking mm -hmm. the law of assumption, but like writing it out, repeating it. It affects you a little bit where I'm at in my career with the in-between, like growing in the hustle bustle, right? Killing it, crushing it, trying to edit, do everything myself. And then you're like, oh, womp, womp. not as many downloads as you thought it was going to be. So it's like, you, don't give into that. If you see that, right. trust me, I've been like that with like views and stuff. I don't even look. I'm just like, no, bitch, I got like 5,000 or not 5,000. I got like 2 million on this or I got like this. Like I just, I live in my head. I'm very delusional. But that's the point. Right. I want to embrace more of that because I it, it is yeah. the point. Because when I do think more like that, things do happen. And I think overall I have a better – I do have that kind of opinion of things. Like I'm yes. going to figure it out. Like I'm figuring it out. I'm going to figure it out from A to B one way or the other. I'm going to get there in between somehow or the other, right? Yeah. But it's, it's not just... your job to figure out the how or the when. You just got to know and believe and have faith and literally – the universe will work it out for you. You'll get yes. it. It can happen instantly. Seriously. Some people have like overnight stories. It's crazy. It can happen. Your reality can change any moment. And it's all up to you. Like everything that you have right now, like you've manifested. If you think about it, you know, yeah. it's your mindset is so important. How you think and feel about yourself and how you think and feel about certain situations around you. And when you finally change it and you, you realize like, oh my God, I've been thinking this dominantly about myself and it's just so negative it's like no wonder right no wonder that didn't happen or no wonder that didn't work out or this person did this it's so trippy <laughs> like really when you change you're like whoa and everyone around you changes too like they all fit your alignment you really yes. just got to align to like your dream yeah i do believe that like when you get aligned certain people they can fall out they, they fall out and sometimes you don't even realize yeah. it and it's not like it's a thing it's not like something actually happened it just is a natural yeah. thing that happens you know what i mean yeah i've had that before too it's just some people have fallen out of my life because they don't align with me. yeah they just don't and i'm just like okay good because i i want to go up more i don't want to be down in your level of being like you know depressing all the time and right some people can just like i'm very sensitive with energies and you have to be yeah. as i've gotten yeah. older i've learned you have to be protective of that absolutely it doesn't mean that you can't overextend here or there but the better you get at managing your energy the better off you're going to be and like i still have to work on like over committing myself to social occasions and things like that but the past year the in between is about to be a year i cannot believe that Holy crap. But I think Happy about, anniversary. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but I think about like everything that I've done in the past year and like, I'm just getting started. Right. Yes, so exactly. it is about the mindset 1000%. So I read the law of attraction, like at the tail end of my depression at the end of 2021. And it's kind of what helped pull me out completely. I, and I was in therapy. I want to say that as well. Like I didn't just do it by myself, yeah. but what was kind of the seal, the deal type of thing was this book. Like it really kind of got me in the right headspace for like, hell yeah, I can do this. My thoughts are magnets. And I've yeah. always spiritually, like I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode, like I'm, I'm spiritual, not religious, but these kind of elements, these themes, I really do believe in that. Like when you mentioned us being the universe, I got a whole spiel on that. We can talk about later. 
Like totally agree, 1000%. So I'm curious if you don't mind sharing just how all of this kind of connects to your spirituality too. How do you, I don't mean to be dramatic when I ask this, but like, how do you live your day to day? Like, is this like maybe a routine if you want to go into that? Do you meditate? But like, how do you bring the law of assumption and just live this life? Yeah, well, I do meditate. I've actually gotten more into it. I follow this girl named Katie on YouTube. She's amazing. She's all like law of assumption, inner conversations. Ooh. I love it. I'll have to send you her. I say, let me get that handle after this. <laughs> yeah. Oh girl, I will. I've been doing her meditations for the past few days. Yeah. I just, every morning when I wake up, if I'm about to go to a negative thought, I'm like, nope. And actually that's a good time to go into your imagination because your subconscious is wide open when you oh. first wake up in the morning because like your conscious mind isn't really there. You're kind of like, you know, in a drowsy state. I've read about that. Good. Yes, that's the perfect time to visualize, say your affirmations. Also, when you're falling asleep at night, that's like the best time to visualize and say all of your affirmations and just be like, oh, like I have it. Because then when you're sleeping, your subconscious is like, okay, well, like that's what Liz said. Like, all right. <laughs> Okay. And I got into law of attraction in like 2019. I don't even know how I got into it. It just kind of happened. It was because I was, I don't even really want to get into the thing, but like, we don't have to. Like, well, okay. Maybe I'll like cut it out. Just then. say you're going through some shit. How about that? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I was going through some shit. <laughs> the eyebrow for me. It was the eyebrow. <laughs> I was going through some shit. And I think that's what got me into law of attraction. And then that summer is actually, it's very cool because once I got rid of that shit, <laughs> I had probably one of the best summers of my entire life. And it's because I was on this vibration and I was like trying to, I don't know, I was almost in like a revenge energy. I just felt like, cause I don't know, I was just pissed off, but I felt good. So it kind of just gave me this energy and I just felt like on top of the world and all these manifestations were coming in and I didn't even know I was doing it. Like I told you, I saw Bell's Guard Garden. I went to the premiere and like, I met oh, Annabelle right. the doll too. Yeah. And, and wasn't that the year that the Fantastic Beast, that, no, that was a couple of years ago. That was like 2021. Oh, yeah. Oh, 20, yeah. Oh, cause it's 2023 now. That's right. Jesus. Isn't that crazy? No, oh, uh, yeah, I'm still in 2019. Ugh. I wish I could live in 2019 forever. It's the best year of my life. Even though there was like shit in that year, but that, like after that shit went away and I dealt with it, my whole new life came in. Because you were vibrating <laughs> at different frequency. Like you finally yeah. allowed everything to come into your space, come into your energy. Exactly. And it was like the way it was coming in. Like it was insane. I swear like every week I was doing something. That's actually a really good affirmation. I like to say I am booked and busy. Mm, I like that. That's a really good. Yeah, I'm, I like I'm that. constantly booked and busy. Like my DMs are being blown up. Like, oh my god, so many opportunities just falling into my lap. Ugh, like really, it gets really fun too. And then when you embody that state, because I'm I'm all about like embodying it. Mm -hmm. I love getting those butterflies in my stomach or my heart fluttering, because to me that is validation. That that right. is who I. I'm experiencing my imagination right now. Like I'm in the present and I know that that is my truth. So that's my way of knowing like, oh, like I have it. My heart just flutters like 24 seven. If I think about stuff. <laughs> I love that. And I love that. And it's, it's telling your subconscious, like this is your truth and everything. And you know, the more that you persist in it, it just becomes easier. And then it just mm -hmm. starts happening. Like it's insane. It's absolutely insane, but I love it. And I'm so thankful for getting into it. I think maybe eventually I would have gotten into it. One of my friends, Sammy, she's like the law of assumption queen. And she's mm -hmm. the one who, who got me into it because I was in law of attraction. That's actually how we became friends is because of law of assumption. So it's like, oh. yeah. And then you kind of just find your people through manifestation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we all just kind of get it. I love people who are <laughs> the universe no it's true it's so true if someone tells me like oh i, can't, I don't I, i'm not really religious i'm like more spiritual in the universe i'm like okay then we need to have a chit chat because i love to talk about it <laughs> you see i'm not i'm not religious either like i was telling you i like i believe in god and jesus and all that and heaven and everything but I, yeah i'm definitely spiritual because i was telling you before we were doing it like i hunt demons and like summon <laughs> demons like i kind of think ooh, i'm kind of going against it but <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized and everything. So, and like, I grew up a like, Christian, but I just think I, I mean, I believe, I don't know. I'm just you just kind of evolved. You've evolved your yeah. own kind of, you've, ta you've taken like what you believe, I guess, of Christianity and like made your own yeah. kind of 
yeah, like spirituality yeah, with I it. Think I'm very in tuned with God and angels and spirit guides and guardian angels in heaven. Like I'm all about that. I love that. It's very comforting, you know, mm-hmm. I, like, I believe in it, but then it's like, I like doing demonic shit. Well, I mean, it's not like I'm doing demonic shit. <laughs> I like to, I'm very interested in demonic stuff. Like I, it's fascinating to me. It's not like I like worship Satan or anything right, like that. Right, you're not just, severing the heads of sheep. Like you are no, like, yeah. I'm not like in those, you know, right. Hollywood parties, you know, right. Illuminati shit. It's just, I love reading about possessions and demons. Right what they do in haunted places. And just, I love the evil stuff. I think it's more interesting than just like the normal ghost stuff, but mm, I, I could see that. I mean, if I wasn't terrified, I'd be right there with you, but um, ah. I'm terrified. So there's that, but that's, um, I feel I've gained a lot from this conversation. Oh, good. Just so with intrusive thoughts, they are very convincing. So when they come in, especially when it's related to the dream, the passion, the imagination, whatever it is, whatever the goal, the wish, the want is, you've just combat that with a positive reflex in a way, right? Yes. Allowing these thoughts to come in in the morning and at night when you first wake up and you're going to bed is the best time to allow that because it kind of lets your subconscious marinate on it a little bit more. I can say as somebody who has been really working against my intrusive thoughts, The more you work on it, it does get easier. So for everyone listening, I know how convincing they are. My favorite thing to say to my therapist is, why am I wired to sabotage myself? Like, why? Like, this is the, like, some shit that I did not sign up for. But you're, like, you mentioned this earlier about your brain doing what's safe. And I meant to say something about that earlier, but that is such a real thing. And as my therapist has explained it as well, I don't know the scientific or psychological terms around it, but your brain is going to do the easiest thing, which is what it notes is safe. So if you are constantly flooding yourself with intrusive thoughts, negativity, this or this, like that is what you're going to just be around all the time because it's what your brain has said. Oh, this is the safe pathway because this is what we're always doing. All roads lead to this. So when you exactly. throw in the positivity, it's like, oh no, that's not right. That's not real because this is the safe road and we know what we need to do. We're the brain. Exactly. So then you start believing it and you're like, oh, because it's trying to keep you safe. It's like a security guard almost. It wants to keep you safe, but really you don't want to live in that story anymore. No, I'm not this person suffering over here and not getting streams or not getting this or not getting these opportunities. Like I am over here getting these opportunities, getting these streams. Like I'm on top of the world. I'm living my best life. I am finally living my dream life. That's a really good affirmation too. Mm. But your brain be like, no bitch. Like you, you don't get nothing. (laughs) It's true though. Like I mean, seriously. Manifestation is constantly redirecting your subconscious, your brain, just being like, no, this is me. This is who I am. And eventually with persistence, your subconscious would be like, oh, right, right. That is who we are. And has the meditating, how is that played into your law of assumption or is that just more of like a grounding type thing or both? I don't want to say the meditation that I do specifically. I can tell you after though. It's very like specific for me, the meditation. She does different ones, but she's all about the inner conversations. And I really love that. So like inner conversations with yourself or with someone in your head or you're hearing, because that's actually a really good technique. What's it called? The telephone technique. <laughs> There's so many techniques you can do, but keep in mind, techniques don't manifest. They just help you get into a state of already having, already being. Some people think like techniques, oh, if I do this, then I'm going to get it. Maybe, but your technique is just helping you get into it. So with Katie and her meditations, you're basically hearing, sounds crazy, like voices in your head. So say for instance, you got like a hundred thousand streams. You could almost imagine me (laughs) being like, oh my God, Liz, congratulations. Holy crap. You got, you just got a hundred thousand streams. It's kind of like, you can also respond to me. I don't know, but some people do that. I sometimes do that too. Like if you want someone to congratulate you as if you've already achieved something. Oh, I've so done that before. Like, see, it's just yeah. like, see, times work. So you can imagine someone congratulating you and then you're responding in your mind. Like, thank you so much. I'm so happy I finally have this. That helps you too. Like anything, any technique works if it helps you get into the state of embodying it. But just the inner conversations, it's just, Oh, I love Ooh, it. I'm, I'm intrigued because I do that too. Yeah. 
it's like a pep talk in your head. Like, I totally believe what you're saying. Yeah. And she's basically saying like, your imagination is the true reality. And what you're seeing in your head is real. And it's going to be pushed out into your physical world. It is like, it's so crazy when you think about it. Even the CIA have confirmed this. Hmm. There's documents that have come out like manifestation is real. And it's so true. Like whatever you focus on grows. I still struggle sometimes with certain parts of my life that I'm manifesting. But then I know like I'm getting better and better as each week goes by. This year has been the best for my mindset. You know, like 2019 was good, was amazing, but I didn't know what I was doing. I just was like, oh, like for some reason, when I think about stuff, it happens. (laughs) And then I I learned about it in 2020. And I think because I was so obsessed with it in 2020 that I was also putting myself in lack because I knew what it was. I think that's something that a lot of people do experience. They're like, oh, law of assumption. Then they're constantly thinking about it. Whereas before I wasn't even thinking about it. I think the most important thing is being present and living your life. I used to like lock myself in my bedroom and stare at a wall and do affirmations for hours on end Mm. thinking that's what I had to do. But really I'm sitting there telling myself, I don't have this. I don't have it. I don't have it. Right. You know what I mean? You have to like live your life, do your thing, go shopping, go out with your friends, go out with your husband, your wife, like whatever. But when your dream comes to your head, make sure you're thinking from it. You're not thinking of it. So be like, yes, I got it. Like, you know what I mean? And then, you know, drop it and continue doing what you love. Don't put so much like, I mean, you don't have to let it go. What you need to let go of is the resistance to it. Mm, Yes. Right. That's That's what I was going to say. Yes. You've got to just have faith and build that faith that it's going to happen. Have faith in you. There's no other. Yeah. Like the crazy stuff has happened to me over the years. I don't have connections. I mean, maybe I kind of have a few connections now, but before I made those connections because of manifesting, I don't have a manager. I don't have like an agent. I don't have somebody working for me. And I think, and so many YouTubers and content creators have a whole team management. I don't have that. And I get invited to movie premieres from (laughs) Warner Brothers. That is so impressive. Like, it's like amazing. Exactly. And I get to go to events and everything. It's because I've always envisioned that. I've always wanted to be on red carpets. Like, I didn't care what I was doing. I just wanted to be on red carpets. And look. You've done And it. I was also very obsessed with Britney Spears' Lucky music video as a kid. Like, I was like, I am lucky. That's a good affirmation, too. <laughs> I am lucky. But when you sit down and reflect on your life and see what has happened for you and what you were thinking in the past, like, you'll start having these epiphanies. Like, holy shit, I manifested that. And then you will start having more trust and you'll believe in Mm. it more. You'll have more faith and it will become easier. It can be a process because Mm. at first you're just, what the heck? Like, this is bullshit. What are you talking about? Especially if you do a few affirmations and then you don't see anything, but don't look at the 3D. Keep going within because inside is your true reality. Yeah. Stop looking for it out here. It will appear for you out here. Sorry, I could go on about this. No, I, I, and, and no, I think stuff. this is great. And I just want to say, even if you take away all the words we're saying, law of assumption, this, that, whatever, yeah. the hardest part is allowing yourself to embody or want or even say, wow, can I achieve this thing that I want to do? Can I do this? Like allowing yourself to even embrace the thought. It's as simple as that sometimes, because this is like your heart's desire, right? Like this is your personal legend. This is the thing that you dream about and you daydream about, you know what I mean? And it's like- You're the meant sec- to have it. That's exactly. Why you're about it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because to me, the more your soul yearns for it, the harder the intrusive thought's going to be. Like that's my theory yeah. on it. So take that as a sign too. If you want to open a bakery because everyone's always told you your cupcakes are the best, but the second you think about it, you're flooded with, well, what about the economy? What about money? What about this? What about that? And granted, yeah. I am giving a very loaded example here, and I don't know your financial situation. So take this as a grain of salt, but lean into that. I just totally believe like we are on this little rock, we are here for a blimp. And I watched this documentary on Netflix and I forgot what it's called, but it's about the concept of infinity. It is fantastic, Ooh. Brittany. We should talk about this afterward actually, because it's a great conversation. Yes. But please, <laughs> when you talked about us being part of the universe, it was talking about the concept of infinity as like a sphere. I think of space as a sphere. Roll with me here, people. There was a bunch of smart people on this documentary. So, um, <laughs> But they were talking about these theories of an infinite universe and a finite infinite universe. I know that's as far as I'll go before I melt your brains. But just roll with me. Think about a sphere, the universe in a sphere. Well, sphere is 
holding energy. I'm watching this and it's talking about the universe is a sphere of my energy, collected energy. We are energy. Like when you think about your dreams and the stars and you think you get validation bumps and then you meet someone that you think you've known your whole life, like all of this is connected, right? So why would your imagination, your 4D, your dreams, your whatever not be real? And so the, at the end of the documentary, she says, even if we can't predict what happens after we die, she's like, how amazing that we as humans get to experience consciousness in this universe, even if it is for a blip. And oh, I'm getting so many, I'm gonna spew goosebumps right now. But it hit Validation me bumps. I was like, <laughs> this, yeah, validation bumps. I was like, this, <laughs> this is what it means to live. Like this is what it is to have a soul. What it is to live is to experience yeah. consciousness, subconsciousness, yes. your thoughts, like, mm -hmm. And it just all really ties into everything. And I really just gave a very poor summary of this really epic moment in this documentary of just what it means to live in this universe. And I don't know, it was just beautiful and spiritual and everything you're saying, I believe, even if it seems woo woo yeah. and a little cray cray. Yeah. If you think of just us space, everything energy as a living organism and how it's all connected, you know what I mean? Like, and like look at outer space and everything, the galaxy, you really think this doesn't exist. Like you really think we're the only ones here and there's so much more out there. It's just, you're meant to be on this planet to experience your desires. Why else are we here? And I just think, you know, when you're having those callings and everything from your higher self, I truly believe it's from your higher self telling you like you already have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you came here to experience it all. So it's yeah. just, you're going to waste your life away, always wondering. So like when you're 70 years old and say like you're constantly going through your intrusive thoughts, you would regret, oh my God, I just wasted yeah. my entire life. And that would be heartbreaking. I would be devastated if I let myself get to that point. Yes. Being like, I didn't experience what I wanted because I let my intrusive thoughts get in the way. Like, no, nope. You know, it's it never too late. How old you are. It's never, it's never too late. late. Never too late. It does not matter your age. I think as women, we think we have an expiration date and that is so far from the truth like it's just because i've had that experience like oh, i know like, society it, totally makes you think that <laughs> society yes and it's just you it's never too late to do what you want to do never i think never. judge judy said that. was judge judy somebody said that you can start your dreams in your 60s but i'm sorry i don't want to start in my 60s like it's happening now <laughs> right exactly i don't want to be 70 years old you know running around chasing ghosts maybe i think I think when I'm 70, I kind of want to like retire. You Let's just see. want the ghost to come to you at that point. But to yeah. your point, it doesn't matter. You can start whenever. Exactly. And for anybody listening who's like, maybe you're unhappy, maybe you are struggling to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve, or I don't know, this whole conversation has piqued your interest. I think yeah. it can be as simple as just asking yourself, what do you want? Like, what drives yeah. you? What is your passion? When you think about it, it gives you tingles. What is something is honest to goodness? I truly believe if you think about it, I don't think you think about it hard. I bet anybody listening knows exactly something that they've th thought within themselves, some deep yep. desire, some wish, some want, some need. Exactly. You know, I think with social media too, social media starts so many careers. There's so much out there with social media. There's so many ways to make money these days too. There's so many tools out there for you to start. Like, you know, it wasn't this way in the early 2000s and no. stuff like it wasn't this easy. It was just all about you have to be on TV or you have to be noticed by somebody. Now you can just post whatever you want and right. people will notice you. You know, you meet people, you get opportunities and stuff. And you just have to believe that you're worthy of mm -hmm. these opportunities. You have to put yourself on the pedestal. Mm -hmm. yep. And I have been guilty of that in the past where I put other people above me. Like, yes. oh, like raise his oh. hand. So you got to put yourself on the pedestal and know your worth. You got to be your own biggest fan. Yep. Yep. Self-love. You do. It's self-love. It's all about that. Because Love yourself you above all else. Exactly. Who's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself? Exactly. You can't accept love from other people if you can't love yourself. Hey. Self-love. I mean, self, oh, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. I'm going to reel it in because I can feel myself getting excited. That's another <laughs> conversation. <laughs> But it, it comes down to that. Self-love is what is going yeah. to help you get through the hardest moments, overcome the toughest battles. It is. You're always going to have yourself. Exactly. No matter what. And even if so, you can't do yeah. it yourself, like self-love will be the thing that helps you get help. 
will be the thing that yeah. makes you talk to your friend or talk to a therapist or talk to your boss, like whatever the situation is. So, yeah. oh man, I love this conversation. It was about manifesting law of assumption, but also a pep talk and why your worth matters and like recognizing your yeah. value. Your value is important to the universe. Clearly it it, it's part of the energy flow. Your thoughts create and it's just always be cautious of what you're telling yourself and what you're saying. Why are you going to think bad about yourself? You know what? I saw somebody say it's so easy for us to think the worst case scenario when it never even happened. Yes. So why can't we just automatically think the best case scenario? We're always going to the worst case and it's never even happened. It never happened that way anyways. Yep. We're like programmed. Always go to the negative when really just go to the positive. Break that cycle. Give yourself a month. Give yourself a week trying mm -hmm. it out. And I'm sure you will start seeing changes in your life. You will. You could see your changes overnight. It I happens. It's different for anybody. Yeah. It's crazy. It I really is. That. Yeah. Even looking up success stories, you can find them on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere. People have so many success stories. And if that helps you to motivate you, then I definitely think you should read into them. That's what I do sometimes. If I'm feeling a bit off about something, I'll read a success story that is similar to what I'm manifesting. And I'm like, oh yeah. my God, well, look, like they did it. Why can't you? Right. You know I, mean? I think Gabby mm -hmm. Bernstein's a big manifester. Have you heard of her? No. She's an author. I'm. She may have done something else to become more famous, but like I think she has a podcast too. I want to read her book, but she's like a big manifester. Gabby Bernstein, so you can check her out too. She's been yeah, on like Glennon Doyle's podcast. I think she's wrote a couple of books, but I listened to a few podcasts with her as a guest and she talks about this kind of stuff and it does, it comes back to your self-worth and just yeah. all the things. And one thing I want to say about all this, everything we've said I'm in agreement with, but one other thing I want to add to it is when you adopt, you assume your position, you assume what it is that you want, that you're there and that it's happening things do happen and it's also when you trust the path you accept the path you don't even realize the decisions you're making that lead down that path right for example with the podcast i want to be a podcaster once i devote the time to go research i'm going to find a new tool or a new trick on how to grow or this or this and then boom little things happen so when you're on the right path you will do things that align with the journey, the 4D, but it also will happen for you. You can't say, I gotta do all these steps and it's gonna happen. No, you're just kind of walking the path blindly. You just have to accept that. And just it's going to come it. natural to you. Yes. Like those will. things that, you know, you get an idea like to do this for your podcast or buy this piece of equipment and it's going to come natural to you because that is paving the way for you to make your desire come into your reality. Yep. So you'll have a random thought maybe to do something or to go somewhere. And that's where you meet someone who's going to help you. Yep. You know what I mean? It's yep. inspired action. Oh, I think that's what it is. Inspired Ooh, action. I like that. And you don't even know it's inspired because it's just coming to you naturally. But when you look back and see, oh my God, that's what had to happen in order for me to experience that or for this to happen. Like it's tricky. Yes. That's my favorite part about manifestation is looking back being like, whoa, that happened because of this. And that had to happen because of that. So another good thing to look at too, say for instance, your reality is looking like complete shit, literally like tornadoes everywhere, like a tsunami, everything. Almost like to me, if I see that, I'm like, okay, you know what? When those things, bad things seem to be happening and everything seems to be going wrong, look at it like, no, the universe is rearranging things. It's almost like a mm. purge. Like all this bad stuff is coming together to go away. Like it's going to disappear. So it's just when things are looking like shit, just keep in mind that there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's something big is happening. I look at it as something really amazing is brewing. That's just the kind of a way to look at it. And it always yeah. happens. When something bad happens, something good happens. And also if you didn't experience some like bad stuff or feeling sad or mad, you wouldn't really appreciate the happy times. And right. So I kind agree. Of, yeah, you kind of yeah. just always have to put a positive spin on everything, even if it's the worst thing ever. Just be like, well, you know, always look on the bright side. But I know it can be hard and you're allowed to react. You're a human. You're allowed to react. You're allowed to have emotions. Never you're allowed to feel emotions in. Yes. Never. Yeah. Never surprise. Exactly. Never. Because that will manifest in like a hole within yeah. your soul. Like literally. Yeah. yeah. And it'll be like a ticking time bomb. Yeah. And you'll just. Load. <laughs> and if you need to heal, take the time to heal. It's not saying exactly. like the disappointment hits and then, okay, tomorrow I'm just going to get on the law of assumption train. No, like feel no. the feelings, heal. 
you know, yeah. take the time you need, but it's just knowing that there is light in the tunnel. The storm will end. There yes. is a rainbow at the end. Yeah. Always. And you always just keep that in mind because it's crazy. Once you start experiencing stuff, you'll be like, wow. And you just get addicted to it. The manifestation is a lifestyle. Like it really is. It's not just something you turn off and on. It's a part of you. You are doing it your whole life anyways. Like you have been your whole life. You've been manifesting without even knowing it. Whatever you're thinking and feeling, it's going to constantly play out here. It's like a projector. Mm. That's a good way to look at it. So what you see in your mind has to push out in here. What you see in your 4D will come out into the 3D. Another good person to follow is a Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's really good with like all the mind stuff. I'll send you his stuff too. He's really good. And Neville Goddard. I'll send you all the people. <laughs> I was going to say, I saw Neville Goddard when I was like Googling this earlier. He's like yes. the, the brainchild behind Law of Assumption. Yeah. Yes. Yes. His teachings are really good. And Dr. Joe Dispenza is really good though too. He has a book called Becoming Supernatural. I want to read it. If you read the reviews on this book, people say it changed their lives. People love him. I just started getting into him, but he's really cool. I like I just him. wrote the information down. So yeah. yeah, once we get off, you can send me his stuff and I can add it in the show notes too. Yes. That'd be cool. Yeah, of course. Well, this has been such an interesting and wonderful conversation. Like I feel very aligned and I feel very, I don't want to say hopeful because that sounds silly, but I just feel reassured. That's probably a better word. Right. Like, this is the right path, the right mindset. This is what you do. Like this is just how you do it. And it's just going to yeah. happen somehow. So, you know, we should check back in in a year and see what's happened for us in, in the next I year. Know. We should Some do things can happen within a week. Tomorrow yes. might wake up. Yeah. Okay, so let's do six months. Six months, we're going to get together. And we're going to be like, all right, where are we at? Brittany, you're crushing it with your content. Liz, you're breaking a thousand downloads. Exactly. And things can happen so fast the more you're saturating your mind in that new story. Your new story mm. just has to become your dominant way of thinking. Yeah. That's it. That's literally all you have to do. I'm going to work on that. Ooh. Yeah. Self doubt. You have no place here. See ya. See you later. Bye. I'm going to work on that. Do it. I was gonna say, I'll keep you up to date. I'll keep the pod up to date. The pod fam, we'll just, you know, we'll see. If anything, let's just be kinder to ourselves. Let's start there. Yeah. And then the rest will follow. So yeah. wherever you are on your journey, start where you need to start. You know what I mean? So exactly. this has been great. I love you so much. I buddy. love this topic. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, seriously. Yeah. All right, guys, yep. we'll, we'll keep you posted on how the journey goes. <laughs> well, for everyone listening, Brittany, where can they find you if they want to follow you on all the social medias? Yes. So my main social media platform is YouTube. So it's youtube.com slash Brittany Crab. And then I have Instagram, which is at Brittany Crab 44, TikTok at Brittany Crab 44, and Twitter at Brittany Crab, <laughs> and Facebook at Brittany 44. I love it. And I will link all of this in the show notes. Everyone can find you. And of course Thank I will you. share this all of the social media too. So oh, I can find girl, you there as well. But thank you so much for coming on the pod and for thank everyone for listening. If you like today's episode, please go rate, follow, subscribe. You can follow Brittany and all the things that she just said. You can follow me on YouTube as well at the in between podcast, TikTok, the in between podcast and on Instagram at in dot between pod. Or if you want to just keep up with me, myself, and I, it's Elizabeth Cheney underscore. So, yes, give that a like, a love, a comment, a reaction. Go check out her page. Give her some love. And we'd really appreciate it. So, because it's tough out here being a content creator. Wanna be. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. not. It is see? so fabulously easy. See? But see what I mean? You yes. have to catch yourself. Like, no. Gosh, getting called Your out. mind automatically went there. It did. You it did. No, it's easy. Because yep. it, it made me nervous. I was like, you know. <laughs> See? But you'll it's you're like, you'll get the hang of it, seriously. You will. If I could, like, please. <laughs> the things that I've manifested, yeah. But anyways. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make a list of things I'm going to manifest and I'm going to share them with you. And then we'll see in a couple of years as they come, not just the years, but well, there's like one, like this brand deal that I really want to collaborate with my favorite clothing brand company. And they do a lot of collaborations with influencers and content creators. So that's on my vision. You already board. have it. You're already collaborating with them. You got the email. Ooh, yeah. I'm getting goosebumps. I hope so. Goodness gracious. I, yeah, I've, I've visualized the whole line. So anywho, yes, we can keep it. talking about this for hours. I swear to goodness, but <laughs> I love you. You're amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. And until well, next time, you. you know, you better come back, Biatch. Gotta have you back. Uh, on the hell yeah. So of course. We'll do some more fun things. But thank you all for listening. And I will see you next week for all new in between. Bye.